guys, it's Brad and the Buff. I got my buff in my head and I'm ready to go. Today, I wanted to take you through the tents and shelters I've accumulated throughout the years on my backpacking and camping journey. I started off on one end of the spectrum and ended up on the ultralight end. I've collected these through the years, have a lot of money invested in them, but I was hoping to put together a quick comparison video that was informative and helpful, so check it out in this video. I have my four shelters set up that I still use regularly. Uh, this is just in my backyard. I'm going to start off. This is my uh, Mountain Smith Morrison 3. This is my three person tent. I primarily use this for like car camping or if my family's out. This is the tent I started with and the first one that I bought in this whole series. This is my Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2 with Mountain Glow. This is my z -Pax Duplex, and this one back here is my Big Agnes Onyx uh, car or Onyx Tarp. Um, and so each one of them has advantages and disadvantages. So we're going to start with this one here. This is by far the most heavy tent I have. Um, I love this tent when I got it. You're all in at about seven and a half pounds. Stakes, um, you know, the fly. It's got a uh, it's got a ground, uh, you know, got a ground mat. It's got the whole thing. Um, so, and, but I only had about $200 into this when I bought it. It is a three person with me and my wife and our two youngest, we can get in this. So if you can get in four people in it if they're really small children. This thing has been awesome. I have taken it all over the country. Um, as far as, you know, using it for car camping, I did do a few backpacking trips with it early on when I didn't want to spend too much money and was able to get, you know, three of my adult friends in here. Um, and it's very comfortable, but um, it's a great tent. Let me just take you around. This one, if you're going to stake it out completely, which I don't have right now, requires 10 stakes. You're going to have one on each corner. You're going to have the front and the back and then one on each side, and then you can guide out on the sides as well. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the extra guy lines on the side to get it out. It has these uh, on the fly, you can open it up and it's got the, where you can make sure that you get proper ventilation here so you don't get a lot of condensation. It does have the flies on the front. Uh, you can store a decent amount of gear right here. You can put your shoes if you need anything. And then the inside here, like I said, I can easily fit inside of this with a person on each side of me. Um, very comfortable, I mean, that's the full length of my arm which my arm's a good three feet. So, you know, right there, not quite three feet. That's, that'd be crazy, but you know, probably at least 30 to 32 inches. So um, you got, you know, about three feet on each side of you. It's probably about nine feet wide. So pretty comfortable in here. Nice, uh, I'm sitting all the way up. So really nice um, head space. Um, you know, it's got pockets in the corners, all the typical stuff. You're not gonna likely take this backpacking with you. But I always like to show people this because if you're starting off one of the first purchases you're going to have to make is a tent. If you don't go backpacking a ton, it doesn't hurt to buy something that is better that you can use for all your trips. If you have to carry the extra three or four pounds, that's not going to kill you when you first start off. Um, you know, just do shorter trips to get into the backpacking. But I think if you're going to buy a tent, you want it to be usable in a lot of different scenarios. And this one has one of the other features I like is what is that it has an exoskeleton. And what I mean by that is all the poles are on the outside and they clip in. I don't buy any tents where you have to slide the poles through the sleeves. That gets really annoying and really difficult to set up. The setup on this is super easy. Each of these tents I can set up in about five to 10 minutes. Five minutes if I'm hurrying, uh, 10 minutes if you know I'm just mosing around and taking my side. This might be the easiest one out of all of them. Just you snap the poles together, you lay them over each other. But I would highly recommend every one you get has an exoskeleton where you clip on the outside. Don't buy anything where you have to slide through sleeves. The sleeves break down. Um, the next tent I'm going to show you was the second one I bought, which is my Big Agnes Copper Spur HV UL2. This tent is about three pounds, 10 ounces. If you, um, I keep saying floor mat. I can't remember the proper term because I'm doing this video. But, um, you know, if you get the protector for the ground, um, which this has 
and then that's also with eight steaks. You're gonna be at about three pounds, 10 ounces, and that's including the Mountain Glow, which is the lights above, which adds about three ounces, which I've done a breakdown on every other shelter I have here in different videos. If you wanna see the individual, I'm just trying to do my comparison so you can see the sizes. Um, once again, this one has a, a nice vestibule out here. You know, you can put gear, your shoes, whatever. Um, it's got these this D-door design. All of these have doors on each side. That's an important feature because if you're ever going to be in there with more than one person, um, that's huge. The other thing that having two doors does is if it's hot out, you can open up both doors and let air blow through. Um, this is got really nice headroom. That is one thing I do like about this tent. Um, I can sit up in it if, if it's glowing at night. It's super cool. But I can tell you, if you've got two people in here with their pads, you are shoulder to shoulder. It, the, the tent is designed so it tapers down. So my feet end is thinner than the upper end. Um, but if you've got your pads in here, you got enough space for two pads, but you will be, your pads will touch each other. It is great as a one person. If you're one person, you got your pad in here, I bought this one primarily because I wanted to have a freestanding tent when I was trying to choose early on. Um, I wasn't real big on the non-freestanding because, um, you know, the freestandings can go anywhere and, um, you know, you might they might weigh a little bit more, a pound or two. But if you're going to go, like I've done canoeing trips where you're, you end up on beaches or you end up on sleeping on chicky huts and it's got to be freestanding for that. So that was an important feature for me. Not as important now because I already have it, but I wanted to make sure I, if I bought something and I was fully invested into a tent, that it was freestanding. Um, I would say that I overemphasize that issue. Um, it's not something I needed as much as I did. If it's not freestanding, you figure out ways to tie down the corners and we'll get into that on the next tent, which is not freestanding. This once again has an exoskeleton, goes up super quick. This tent, actually, I think I've actually ended up using the least because I transitioned pretty quick into the next tent I'm about to show you. Well, actually, I went to the, show, show, or the tarp after that, but um, I still love having this one. It's been great. You can use up to 10 stakes on this, but it really only requires um, eight, which is going to be one for each corner. So you can guy out the corners if you want a little bit of extra. I have actually never done that, but you can do the corners, each of the corners, you're going to have to pull the middle here and one on each side um, for your vestibules. Um, so anyways, this tent was about, I think, a little over 500. I got it on sale. Footprint, that was the word I was looking for that goes underneath your tent, um, the footprint. But anyways, this was about 500 pounds when I bought it new a couple years ago, maybe three years ago. Um, great tent, have nothing but good things to say about it. But out of all of these, the most impressive one I have, I think, is my Z-Pax Duplex. Now, I have not gotten this out on a ton of nights, but I love this thing. It sets up, it is tricky to set up initially. Once you get the hang of it, you can set this thing up. It has the quickest setup, um, in my opinion. Uh, like I said, it's just tricky. It does take some skills, but once you get it, this thing with stakes and everything and with the two poles, I don't use trekking poles. So I bought the one off the Z-Pack uh, website. So it's got two end poles that I pack. I'm all in on this at 27 ounces with stakes, with poles, everything. And I like it because it's just a one piece tent. There's no, nothing that I have to put in a it. And what I mean by that is the floor, there's no fly. It's just all one thing. So like with this one, you know, you set it up, you put the fly on, you put the, the, um, the footprint underneath of it. This one, it just, once again, the fly is attached. It's just all one thing. And then you stake it out and then it's up. The inside of this one is actually bigger than my Big Agnes. Um, it's, a, it's, it's about the same width, but it's the same width on each side. I really got this as my one person. Um, like I said, you got this center pole here. You do have the, um, you do have the D doors on each side, just like that tent. It is a little annoying that you do have a pole right in the middle of it. Cause like, if you try to get out in the middle of the night, you gotta be careful you don't hit it. Um, but you can get, you know, if I'm sitting all the way to the side, just like this, you can see I can get another person right here. You are going to be shoulder to shoulder, but if it's, if it's me by myself and I always hear people 
Uh, I say this in just about every video just to get people frame of reference, but I'm about six foot two. So you can see I've got a few inches right here of space. Oh, I got something black in my face. I think, oh, what the? Um, anyways, you got a few inches here. And then also you can see my feet. I've, uh, I'm not really touching the tops of anything. This tent only requires six stakes. I typically take eight because I want to pull. You can pull it out a little bit here. Um, so just by pulling it out, it gives me some extra head space. But if you're using it as a one person tent, it is pretty luxurious as a one person tent. And at 27 ounces, um, so essentially just a little over a pound and a half, you really can't beat that. I have searched everywhere. And just for the convenience, it's got the netting on the side. It lets air in. You got vestibules on each side. So if you are staying in here with another person, you each have your own vestibule. Um, I, I think that just there's basically very little you can shave off of this. If you use hiking poles, it's even better because then you don't have to include the added weight of these, uh, which are each about two and a half to three, three ounces. So you can get rid of these if you do use hiking poles. Um, so you save even more weight that way. But this thing is super cool. It is super light. Um, it feels, the space in here feels nice. You get a lot of airflow that comes in underneath the sides of the tent. This was also, you can find them on Facebook. This tent was also about $500 for me because I got it through a Facebook group. Um, but I think that this one is worth its weight in gold um, because it can be a two person, but it's a luxurious one person. The only one I've considered is you can get the Altiplex, which is in the same system. I've done research. It is, it only requires one pole, so you lose a pole. So for me, it would save me about eight total ounces if I went to the Altiplex from this, which is significant. It is half a pound, but you do lose the two person capability and you don't have doors on each side. The Altiplex only has the one door. So if you want to set in your tent and let some breeze go through it, that's not going to be an option for you. So overall, love this tent. But the one that I've ended up using the most recently is my tarp. This is my big on it or big Agnes Onyx tarp. Um, I said I have a video on it. This thing is cute. This is Dyneema Cuban fiber. Uh, so is this. That's still nylon. I'm not sure what the um, what my Morrison is. My Mountain Smith Morrison three is. But this tarp. When I have, um, if I use two poles, usually I bring two poles. Right now I have it set up with one. If I bring two poles and all my stakes, I'm at about 11 ounces. I will use this if I'm expecting the weather to be decent um, and if I'm staying in shelters regularly. Because most of the time, if I have a shelter available, I'm going to use it. So I'm carrying this more as like an emergency setup in case the shelters are filled. And usually I'm going to bring a shelter regardless of whether that says the weather is good. I've seen plenty of people get stuck in what was supposed to be good weather and then end up turning bad. So I always do bring a shelter, even if I'm doing a weekend trip and the weather report's supposed to look good. But um, I bring this one just because I don't really plan on using it. Now I have used it for quite a few nights. I've been very comfortable in it. The downside is, is there is no mosquito netting. There is no... Um, there is no floor in it, so I have to also in that 11 ounces, that also includes uh, some polycro that I bring with me that's about two ounces that I put under my sleeping bag. Um, usually, and the way I have it set up now is I'm gonna take one end and attach it to a tree. So like this right now is tied to my fence, but I'm gonna use one end that's a little bit higher up that's got some shelter above it. So obviously if it rains, you're gonna get the, the sheltering from the branches above you. So one end I usually tie to a tree and then I'll either take my pole on the other end or I'll try to find another tree to tie the other side to to hold it up. But um, it's very roomy for one person. You can get two people in it. Let me take you on the inside here. So this tarp is eight and a half feet by eight and a half feet. So if I'm all the way down, you can see directly above me, I've still got, I don't know, about a foot and a half of space behind me where I'm covered. And if I'm underneath the tree here, then I know I'm not going to catch a lot of rain. And then my feet are inside of this by about a good foot. So I've got good coverage on either side. If it really gets bad out, then what I can do is I can lower the poles on this side so I don't have as much weather exposure. But you can see if you set it up right, 
you've got good head space. I can sit up in here. I could cook underneath of here. Um, you know, like I said, I'll take one in and I'm a good two feet from the top here. Um, and you can get two people on, underneath of these is another thing I like. This one you can set up with uh, seven stakes at a minimum is what I'd recommend if you tie it to one end. I always bring eight anyway, so I can do all, you know, I'll do all four corners, both ends, and then I'll put a stake right here in the middle just to keep it taunt. But, um, you know, this is a great shelter. I don't know if I'd want to be out a lot. One downside is, is because there is no mosquito netting, I don't typically use this in the summer or when it gets warm. Um, you know, so you're going to get bit, uh, you know, if you don't have anything, you're going to have to bring some kind of repellent. Um, but in general, it's great for, if you're going to be out in the winter, you're going to be losing, using a lot of shelters, which I do do a lot of winter hiking. Um, you can also, like if I do go out in the winter and I'm expecting it to be super cold, I can wrap it around my sleeping bag at night to hold in a little bit more heat. So it does kind of act as an extra blanket. Um, so it does have a lot of uses and for how light it is, it's great if you want to go UL. I do like the tarp tinning way more than I thought. Um, this was, I got this, I think it retails for 500, but I got it through Facebook for 250. You can find really good ones for right around $300 that are about this size. I would recommend one that was a nine by seven. Um, if you're, especially if you're going to use it solo. Um, you know, you want, I, I wish this one had, you know, just a little bit, it's eight and a half by eight and a half. So it's a square. I would have preferred for it to have more length for more head coverage. If I was shorter, it probably wouldn't matter as much. It hasn't been an issue for me, but it's something I'm always paranoid about that I'm going to get a lot of rain splatter on my head. But if I had it my way, I'd probably get like a 10 by seven or a nine by seven, something like that, but something a little bit longer and I would forego some of the width. But like I said, with, with it, the width currently, it can be used for two people. So maybe you lose that as well. But um, anyways, I'll start this. Once again, my three-person shelter is what I started with. This was the least expensive, but it's also great for car camping, and you can use it for hiking. These three all cost approximately the same amount. Um, this one's freestanding. Um, it is about three, a little over three and a half pounds. This one is a little over a pound and a half stakes. And if you have the poles with it, without the poles, each of the poles is about three ounces. So, you know, you lose about, you know, you, you end up, I think at about 19 ounces, maybe 20 with the, with the stakes. If you don't use the poles with the poles, you end up at about 27 ounces. And, um, this is my tarp. This is what I typically am going to take if there's a lot of shelters and the weather is good. But these are these are all they can all be used as two persons. They're all luxurious if you're using them as a one person. So I like the flexibility for all these and I've used them all on trips. But you can end up if I were only to have one of these tents, it would absolutely be this duplex here. I think it's the most flexible. It's very light. It has a mosquito netting. You can use it for just about any situation. So if I had to go with one and I only had to buy one of them, it would be this one. And if, if I had to order it, I would own this one. Then I would own my tarp because I'm, this is the one I end up using a lot because I stay in a lot of shelters. So it's very flexible if you're like a weekend warrior, like I typically am. And then I would probably buy this one because it's great for car camping with my kids i don't have to worry about them i'd be paranoid with them being in any of these other systems but this one's great for like a family and it's great for hiking if you're in three people you can split up the gear and these two are kind of especially since this duplex here has a kit now that you can make it freestanding i would just get the kit i probably wouldn't own both of these if i had known about both products i'm not even sure this tent existed when i bought this one but um, you know, I would probably forego this one and just get this one with the freestanding kit. If I ever needed to use a freestanding kit, I would have it for those type of trips. But, uh, this is a little bit of a longer video, but I did want to show you all the different shelters that I do have, what I kind of use them for. It's so fun to have these tents and to play with them. I also have some hot tents that I can show you in a different video that I use for my hot tent trips, but I don't really use them necessarily just for straight backpacking trips. But I hope this video has been helpful for you guys. I love my gear. I love showing off my gear. So um, hopefully this video has been informative. 
and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I put my wide x light pad in each of the tents so you could kind of get an idea of what it would look like inside with the pad. As you can see, most of them have plenty of space and I also wanted to give you a shot showing how they looked in their pack size. Hey guys, if you liked the video you just saw, please subscribe, click the bell so you can get alerted for any new videos that I may do, and check the links below for any information I described in the video. I'll try to put as much there as possible. Thanks for watching.